Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to talk about spherical coordinates. Spherical coordinate system is widely considered to be the most complicated coordinate system out of the three main coordinate systems, namely Cartesian, cylindrical, and spherical. Cartesian and cylindrical coordinate systems were already described in my previous videos, as well as polar coordinates, so now it's the time to talk about spherical coordinates. You will see it's not that complicated. Uh, many people consider it more complicated because we have two angles that we use to map a point in space. And uh, in the other coordinate systems, we only had one angle in cylindrical case or no angle at all in Cartesian coordinates. Spherical coordinate system, however, is very useful and we use it quite often in atmospheric sciences, in particular in the fields of radar meteorology and satellite meteorology. And in physics and engineering in general, wherever you have some spherical symmetry, and quite often we have spherical symmetry, it is very useful to use spherical coordinates. Now let's go and mathematically describe this coordinate system. Let's say we have a point P that we want to map in spherical coordinate system. We will start by also plotting Cartesian coordinate system like this with axis x, y, and z. In spherical coordinate system, this point P is characterized by this radius vector that we will call rho and angles phi and theta. Angle phi is the same angle that we had in the case of cylindrical coordinate system, which means I need to project this point P to the xy plane. This you will remember was radius vector in cylindrical coordinates. This is angle phi and this is angle theta. Therefore, we say that this point P has coordinates rho, phi and theta. A quick technical note some books call this angle phi and this angle theta. I decided to follow some other conventions, some other books, and I call this phi and this theta. From this figure, we can already see that the range of rho is zero and it can touch zero to infinity. Range of phi is from negative pi to plus pi. So positively it goes up to pi and negatively clockwise up to negative pi. Again, in some books, some conventions say that this is from 0 to 2 pi. So it goes counterclockwise all the way to 2 pi. I also talked about that in my video on the standard angle. So check that video. And theta goes from 0 all the way down to pi. Similar to my previous video on cylindrical coordinates, I would like to examine different surfaces that we get if we fix one of the coordinates and vary other two. So here I already prepared these, two, these three cases. In the first case, I will fix angle theta to some value a, and what is the surface that we will get? You can conclude that from this figure, using a little bit of imagination, if this is fixed, this angle, and I can go around between minus pi and pi, and I can also go, go from zero to infinity, then the surface that I will get is a cone, just like so. And the cone goes all the way to infinity, but I have to stop somewhere. Therefore, you can see that this equation theta equals a is, a, is equation of a cone 
in spherical coordinate system indeed very very simple equation. In Cartesian coordinate system the equation would be more complicated namely it would be z is c square root x square plus y squared. Second case we fix angle phi to some value a and we let rho and theta to vary freely. Well let's say I fix angle phi to this value. So angle phi is measured like so, you remember. Let's say I fix it to this value. And now I vary all possible thetas between 0 and pi and rho from 0 to infinity. Well, what I will get is shape like this. And this is surface, it's not a frame, but full shape. And this will actually go to infinity, but again, I have to stop somewhere. So we get this shape that looks like a fan, but formally it is called half disk. Finally, the third case is when we fix rho, radius vector, to some value a, and we let the two angles freely move along their range. This is indeed the most interesting case because you will notice if this is the fixed distance that I prescribe and now I vary theta between 0 and pi and I vary phi from uh, 0 to pi and from 0 to negative pi I simply get a nice sphere and that's the reason we call this spherical coordinate system. Now here is a note, this is a hollow sphere. Now let's go back to this figure and find relationship between Cartesian coordinate system and spherical coordinate system. First notice from this figure that this x component over here, that this y component from this figure is equal r sine phi. Similarly, this x component is r cosine phi. This height z is clearly equal rho cosine theta. How did I conclude that? Because this height z is the same as this and this is angle theta Therefore, z is rho cosine theta. This top over here would be rho sine theta. So, from this figure and uh, this reasoning that I gave here, we can see that y is r sine phi. I just wrote it here. But r is rho sine theta. Notice that r is this and this is rho sine theta. Therefore y is equal r uh, sorry rho sine theta sine phi. Similarly we have that x is equal r cosine phi, but r is rho sine theta, which means that x is equal rho sine theta cosine phi. Lastly, from this figure, we already observed that z is rho cosine theta. And these three underlined equation give me transformation from spherical to Cartesian coordinates. Let's try to squeeze here conversion from Cartesian to spherical coordinate system. Well, notice from this figure that rho squared is r squared 
plus z squared. But r squared is x squared plus y squared, which means that rho squared is r squared, x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Angle phi, we see from this figure that tangent of phi is y over x, which means that angle phi is arc tangent of y over x. But as always in these cases, we have to use arc tangent too. And uh, I have entire video devoted to the difference between regular arc tangent and arc tangent two. We use the similar reasoning to find angle theta. We see that tangent of theta r is x squared plus y squared, so that is equal square root x squared plus y squared divided by z, which means that theta is arc tangent of square root x squared plus y squared divided by z. Now you will kindly notice that here we don't actually need to use arc tangent two. And I hope you can see that from this figure because angle theta only goes from zero to pi. And this conversion gives us Cartesian two spherical coordinate system. In atmospheric sciences, this coordinate system is used in radar meteorology. Imagine that this over here is the position of our radar. Radar shoots a beam at certain elevation, like so, and then it scans 360 degrees. Then it changes the elevation, and then again it scans 360 degrees. And you can see how this is much easier to represent in a spherical coordinate system than it would be in Cartesian coordinate system. I will have my uh, playlist on radar meteorology at some point and I will talk extensively about the operations principle of a Doppler radar or meteorological radar, how they work, what they are useful for, and uh, how we can use spherical coordinate system to process data from uh, radar measurements. After watching my series of videos on coordinate systems, you became expert on coordinate systems. I talked about Cartesian coordinates, polar coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, as well as spherical coordinates today. I also provided relationship between these coordinate systems. Well, truth to be told, I didn't give you a relationship between cylindrical and spherical coordinate system. I leave it up to you as an exercise, but if you are keen to know that, but you are struggling with uh, developing that relationship, let me know in the comment section below and I will make a short video where I will uh, provide you with transformation equations between these two coordinate systems. This also finalizes my short uh, series of videos on coordinate systems because I think this is enough now for us to carry out forward with atmospheric sciences, wind energy and wind engineering. However, keep in mind there are many other things that we could talk about coordinate systems. For example, I just described unit vectors in Cartesian coordinates, but we could uh, describe and uh, define unit vectors in uh, other coordinate systems because they are not the same as they are in uh, Cartesian coordinates and so on and so uh, unit area, unit volume in different coordinate systems, all that can be described, but I will skip it at least for now. And uh, if uh, a need emerges, I will describe it later. In the next video, we are going to talk about fluid dynamics and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Until then, goodbye.